One of the major themes of the Frieza saga was that the past returned. Well, that really wouldn't be the last time. Goku's seemingly noble act of ridding the world of the tyranny of the Red Ribbon Army so many years ago would infuriate one scientist into a maniacal plot of revenge. On this edition of Dragon Ball In Death, we examine the themes of the Cell Arc, an arc that honestly does have a handful of inconsistencies, but among these lie some of the absolute best character arcs that Toriyama has ever written. この放送はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りします。The theme of fathers and sons in the series has never been more prevalent than in the Cell Saga. It is quite the juxtaposition when comparing Goku and Gohan's relationship to that of Trunks and Vegeta. Having only heard stories from his mother in his grim future, it is made clear that Trunks was fascinated with his father whom he never met or spent time with and in the Cell arc, he spent more than enough time with him well over a year in the Room of Spirit and Time. Although Vegeta was fairly distant from Trunks, it still counts. Early in the arc, Trunks confronts Vegeta for seemingly not caring about his present day wife and son when they were attacked and Trunks took issue with that. From then on, Vegeta acted as if he wanted nothing to do with him, obsessing over surpassing his limitations, surpassing Goku of course, and destroying all whom stood in his way. Trunks however, had some daddy issues constantly seeking his father's approval, watching over and caring for him. He even hid the fact that he grew stronger than Vegeta just to prevent breaking his fragile ego. Trunks had an incredible amount of respect for his father even at times when he didn't deserve the respect, but Vegeta continued to not show affection in return. However, at the climax of the arc, Cell, after returning back from near death, blasted a hole in Trunks' chest. It was at that moment Witnessing the death of his son, although his son from the future, his son nonetheless, that he snapped and attacked Cell with great vengeance and furious anger. Vegeta's tough outer shell was cracked and it could no longer be denied that he indeed cared and it took his son's death to really bring it out of him. When it comes to Goku and Gohan, they did the most amount of bonding during this arc as well. For the first time, Goku and Gohan trained together, both during the three year time skip after Trunks left the first time, and later on again in the Room of Spirit and Time. As a result of this time spent together, they both achieved a power greater than either of them had prior. Goku, however, saw that Gohan had a sleeping power within him, and a potential even greater than his and such, like any proud father, sought to bring out the best in him. It was really no different than any father wanting his son to hit a home run or score a goal or get a touchdown. Then of course the touchdown actually happened during the Cell games. Unfortunately Gohan's recklessness and his constant desire to toy with Cell would lead to the deaths of Trunks and Goku. With Trunks dead, Vegeta lost it. And although Goku was dead, he passed his spirit down to his son, essentially passing down the torch to him, allowing Gohan to vanquish Cell once and for all. It's interesting that Goku was so supportive of making his son so strong during this arc, and yet Vegeta selfishly focused on himself. However, by the end, he and Goku were somewhat kindred spirits. If you want to dig even deeper... There is actually a third father and son relationship, although not as direct, and that is that of Cell and Dr. Garrow. Although a lot of this isn't explicitly stated in the manga or anime, we can presume that Dr. Garrow's conversion of humans Lapis and Lazuli into artificial humans 17 and 18 was not only just to build up an army to combat Goku and his friends, but also for the eventual ascension of Cell into perfection. 
Also, did you ever notice that the way Toriyama wrote the story, both Gohan and Cell ascended at right around the same time? I love the duality being told here. As you can tell, Toriyama knew that the direction he was taking the story was having these two meet in the climactic finale of the arc. One could say that Cell was Gero's final plan to finally destroy Goku and attain revenge for the Red Ribbon Army. Once becoming perfect as well as having the genes of tyrants like Frieza and the egotistical Vegeta, Cell became the most narcissistic villain in all of Dragon Ball, constantly in awe of his perfect body, and at times this high level of self-preservation would consume Cell, causing him to disobey his prime directive and test his new body rather than just quickly destroy Goku. This would end up costing him greatly. Because Cell had the genes of Goku and Vegeta, he wanted to test his perfect body against the strongest warriors. He presumed that Goku was the strongest on Earth, but once he was told by Gohan that the boy had hidden power, Cell's prideful and cocky attitude began a chain of events that would culminate on Gohan transforming beyond the limits of a Super Saiyan and eventually destroying Cell. Cell was clearly hiding a lot of power and may have easily killed everybody at the Cell games, but no, his foolish mindset wanted to see Gohan at his maximum. So although the Saiyan blood inside of him granted him a great power, it also made him battle hungry and quite illogical even for a machine. What's fascinating about Cell's decision is that the entire reason he even became perfect was because of a similar decision earlier made by the boneheaded Vegeta. Vegeta wiped the floor with second form Cell in their battle with absolutely zero chance for Cell to survive because even if Vegeta lost, Trunks was nearby and as we know, at that level, Trunks would have ripped Cell into pieces. Once Cell told Vegeta about how powerful he would become if he absorbed 18, Vegeta's bloodthirsty attitude and desire to call Cell's bluff took over him and he actually assisted in Cell becoming perfect. Once Cell became perfect, it was all she wrote for Vegeta. The stupid idiot could have avoided all of this had he just finished Cell off when he had the chance. In fact, if you go even further back in the arc, Vegeta was the one who allowed 17 and 18 to be awoken in the first place, all because he wanted a challenge. So Vegeta essentially made the same boneheaded dumb fuck mistake twice in the same saga. Vegeta was a glutton for punishment, but don't forget that also Kudadin could have easily destroyed 18 with the remote control. So after Cell took care of Vegeta, Cell fought Trunks, and if you remember, Cell defeated Trunks because although Trunks showed exceptional physical strength, he packed on so much muscle mass in his Super Saiyan Grade 3 form that he was too slow and couldn't touch Cell. What good are huge muscles and power if you can't hit your opponent? What I find utterly fascinating, and to a degree kind of brilliant about Toriyama's writing here, is that later on when Cell was matched up against a seemingly invincible Gohan, Cell bulks up his body to a massive scale, which mimicked Trunks' form, but also brought along the same disadvantages. He was too slow. It amazes me that Cell was the guy who told Trunks to his face the fatal flaw of that strategy, and now... Faced with a desperate situation where Gohan has him by the balls, he resorts to the same tactic that he subconsciously knows won't work, and as expected, it didn't work. How could you be so dumb? In fact, if you trace this storyline back to the very beginning, Bulma suggested that they find the Doctor way before he even has a chance to finish his mechanical monsters and is quickly shot down by Goku and Vegeta because they want to test their skills against them despite the very grave warning they received from the future. This arc is filled with bad decisions, even by the characters we're supposed to root for, and it's one after another. Because fuck logic and preventing a legitimate disaster, we want to fight. In some ways, Trunks is the most down-to-earth and focused main character in this arc here, and it's all because of his dark upbringing.
No matter how dire things may seem, there is always hope. It's a theme that's explored in fiction constantly, and I think it fits hand in glove for the story of Trunks from the future. It truly is the darkest arc in the entire series, but there's that glimmer of hope that you never let go of, and in the end it might just work out. The closing song of the Trunks TV special is called Aoi Kaze no Hope, which translates to the Blue Wind of Hope, and in the song, Hironobu Kageyama sings, I don't believe in things like history. The causality of the story is pretty impressive. Had Goku and the others not died, Bulma would have never finished that time machine, which allowed Trunks to go back. Granted, there are holes in this story, which I will outline in a later video. The logic behind Bulma's decisions makes sense. We soon discover as a result of Trunks traveling back in time, he creates a new timeline rather than altering his. The intention to go back wasn't just to warn Goku and give him medicine to change that timeline, but to also learn from Goku himself as well as get to know the father he never had who died before he learned how to walk. Trunks states that the idea was to find a possible weakness for the artificial humans or perhaps even take Goku back to the future with him to help. However, by the time Trunks was ready to return to the future, at the end of the arc, he had already powered up to a tremendous degree and of course made mincemeat out of the future 17 and 18 without Goku's help. Of course, Goku was dead either way so that wasn't going to happen. At times things may look their absolute bleakest but there is always hope. In the anime version of these events, Gohan's death is what triggered Trunks to become a Super Saiyan. However, in the new timeline, it would be Gohan himself who would be the savior and Trunks dying in that fight in the Cell game. The constant theme of hope is replayed over and over from the arrival of Trunks and his disposal of Frieza in what seemed to be a hopeless situation for our heroes to Goku awakening from his coma to the end of Cell. So when you're feeling that life is against you, Never forget the power of hope. I hope that you had as much fun watching this video as I had making it. Next time, I will present my analysis of the themes of the final arc in Dragon Ball Z, the Boo Saga, where internal conflict became a huge focus. But we'll talk about it then. I'll see you then. <laughs> you should feel lucky. He's the first one to be touched by my perfect body.